Yes, Jody uh, Pandey, please uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us where you are and, and please tell us a story. Uh, I'm Jyoti, a seeker and a lifelong learner, counselor, psychologist, mindfulness coach, happiness coach. These are a few tags which I think help others understand me better. I am at Bhopal. And uh, so I begin my story. Thousands and thousands of years back in Kushinagar, the sun was setting down. It was dusk. The air around was reverberating with the chants. Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum. The monks were meditating. The fragrance of the sandalwood was all around in the air. Suddenly, a child came running. Buddha is unwell. Buddha is unwell. And the monks, who were just about to complete, finish the meditation, opened the eyes gently and stood up. They rushed towards the place where Buddha would meditate every single day and reached there and saw a strange sight. Buddha lay between the two trees who had suddenly blossomed to the surprise of everyone. And the white flowers were falling down on the Buddha who was laying, who lay on the ground with his eyes closed. He looked unwell. The monks huddled around him and stood chanting with their eyes closed. For they felt there was something amiss. The light was slowly fading away. And one of the younger monks, who could not contain himself, cried, Buddha, what will we do without you? He opened his eyes for a second and said, this is all decay. I can only show you the way. You need to be your own light. And with these last words, he gently closed his eyes. And every, everyone saw a light rising slowly from the earth, probably towards the heaven. And in heaven, Indra, the lord of 33 crore gods and goddess, was waiting for Buddha. He was excited, for he knew Buddha was to come any moment. In a spectacular palace, he fretted from one room to another to see all the arrangements. But still, something was amiss. And suddenly he thought of something. He ordered for a golden net and billions and millions of diamonds, all big ones. And as soon as the diamonds came, they were too soon into the net at all the points. And then this beautiful net, the jewel net was hung over the ceilings and the walls of the palace. Yes, I think Buddha is going to like it. He said to himself and rushed to the gates of the palace where the, where the rose petals were strewn all over for Buddha to walk. And then Buddha appeared with his hand closed his serene face, gentleness and eyes and smiled at Indra. Indra took him inside and Buddha walked mindfully feeling the softness of the petals and smelling the rose all around. He walked gently and mindfully and came to the center of the hall. Look Indra, look! 
He beamed with joy as he turned around and around. What a beautiful jewel net it is. This is beautiful, Indra. It captures the nature of the reality so well. All the jewels are lit by the same source of light, Indra. And each diamond reflects another diamond, has the reflection of another diamond in it. He beamed with joy. And then he took Indra to a corner, flicked a diamond, and beamed with the changing nature of the reflection all around. Indra, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. See how we all are interconnected. A flick in the diamond changes the reflection of all the diamonds, not the ones just close to it. This is lovely, Indra. This is so beautiful. And this is the reason. This net teaches us the reason why we must be kind and practice compassion towards all beings as they all are as much a part of us as we are to theirs. Indra was stunned. There were tears in his eyes. He started weeping. He started weeping with the sudden awareness. And then, and then he wiped his tears, felt the lightness and calmness, and did something. This net is not for me. This is for the entire world to see. He gathered the net from everywhere in his arms, strode out to the balcony and flung the net high up in the heaven for the entire world to see. And every night, as I look up to the heaven, I see this net and I'm remind, reminded of this beautiful interconnectedness. What a beautiful thing. Sure enough, we all are interconnected and one action, a small one, on our part changes the entire being of everyone. Thank you. Wow. Yes, thank you. Hi, Jyoti. This is Lena. Very nice story. And uh, uh, the message, you know, it's like, like the diamonds, there are so many learnings in this story and each one is complementing each other. So uh, very beautiful story and very uh, passionately you narrated. Very nice. Loved it. What, what were some of the learnings for, for you in this story? Uh, she said so many things when she weaved them. One is like mindfulness, you know, at what point when the Buddha is walking on the petals, you know, at what point uh, that you do, he was so aware of even walking on those petals and the smells. So uh, that was one. Uh, the meditation, the monks haven't finished it yet. And I would, if I would have been there, I would have panicked. I would have opened my eyes. The way you come out of meditation, it is also so important. The monks slowly opened their eyes. And the youngest one, he couldn't, you know, uh, uh, take it. So the way Buddha addressed, even before just leaving, how calmly Buddha addressed his query, that also I loved. And for the uh, diamonds, I never expected this turn. I never expected this turn. Probably Buddha would say, oh, this is all worldly pressure and I don't want anything of that. So, no, he did not uh, deny it, but he chose to saw, see in it uh, a very different thing. The way Buddha related to that was also very different. So many, many learnings in this story. Beautifully narrated, beautifully chosen. Very nice. Yeah. 
I would like to add something to that. Uh, for came, what came through to me was uh, the profound message that inter, interconnected, interconnectedness is something that we should remember how interconnected we are as human beings and how what the interconnectedness with nature, with animals. And if we really always be mindful of that, how much our, uh, our uh, thoughts and the way we live on earth uh, change and uh, how much we will treasure each other, how much love and respect we will have for each other and their feelings and their dreams and how beautiful the world will become. Uh, what a diamond of a story you have brought, Jyoti. Uh, it's a beautiful story. And uh, my message from this is that we should always remember that we are interconnected. What one does changes the whole matrix. And we have to be very responsible. We have to be extremely responsible in our behavior and in the way we, and what we say, in what we do. Uh, thank you, Yarenu. Just a second, somebody asked the source of the story. I, my apologies, I wanted to start with this. I heard the story long time back, I don't even remember, by Elisa. I distinctly remember the story was by Elisa. And today in the morning when I meditated, I thanked Elisa for this beautiful story, which has just stayed with me. So, and then I searched the net. So it, by, it was by the name Indra's net. So it is available there. Yes, Renu, thank you so much. Yeah, so what- uh, Could I add something to it? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, Jyoti, first of all, I really loved your voice, the way you narrated, the depth in your voice. Uh, it's so apt for the story. And uh, I was really amazed uh, Indra is supposed to be a Hindu god. Um, according, to, he is uh, considered as a Hindu god. While you connected Hinduism with Buddhism, so I saw this uh, as an amazing thing. Like uh, as uh, Sangeeta ji said, that we are all interconnected. So yes, uh, so is Hinduism and other religions too. So ultimately, uh, we all are interconnected and we bow to the divine. Thank you so much for the story, Jyoti. Yes, Renu, please. I'm so sorry to have interrupted. No, no, that's okay. Thank you, Jyoti. I love the story. Like everybody says, you have such a calm, soothing voice. I love the way you took us to that entire story. You know, the calmness of Buddha came through your story. And for me, the, what the reflection I got was, yes, Indra wanted to show off, he made a golden net and he wanted to present him with diamonds and ruby because he thought these were the important things he wanted to give to Buddha. But Buddha saw the thing entirely differently. He said that these are all, each diamond is reflecting the other. And when he takes that net out and throws it up into the sky, they become stars. And these stars connect all of us because everyone around the world sees the same stars, which means that all of us are sharing the same earth the same treasure that all of us should actually enjoy and preserve and look after. What humans are doing today, we are just destroying. And I think what we need to learn from this is that all of us are reflections of each other, that we all need to connect with one another and we all need to come together to make this world whole again. So thank you very much for that story. My favorite part of the story was when I was doing, the first thing what I said mentioned was we all are lit by the same source of light. I mean, eventually it's about interconnectedness, but uh, this is all Buddhism says we all are lit by the same source. We are all pieces of the same being or consciousness. So yes, Renu, thank you so much. Uh, may I also add just two, two seconds. So I just loved the uh, the transportation that happened when you began your story. I just felt that I was sitting there under the tree and the meditation was going on. I think it was a very uh, good trance, like an immediate movement of where I am right now and to where you are in the story. And the thread, you connected the thread right from the beginning of the story to the end. There was a clear theme of this light. So when Buddha is passing away also, he's telling that the light is inside you. You know, and at the, 
and the diamond is also glittering with a form of light around and the story settles down to the feeling that all of us have this light so i just loved uh, you know the moment and this the stillness and the settling thank you so much for giving the story to us i have forgotten to thank eric because i was very very nervous and overwhelmed and uh, if not for eric this story wouldn't have reached you all or i wouldn't have prepared it so thank you so much eric thank you so much just to add a little bit thank you so much jyoti it was very soothing to listen to you and i was thinking of the tremendous opportunity that we have to be the light in you know in someone's life and in the world and that we may never underestimate what we could do with those small actions that we take and the ripple effect that we could produce and spread the light so that was something that thank you so much wonderful okay um simran are you here Yes, Eric. Wonderful. Good. Okay, let me get set. Uh